thought about them as anticipated costs, as the guilt and shame, as this how influence somehow influence the choice process. Or they thought about emotions as basically interferences in reasoning. Uh, in an emotional state, you're out of control. You know? So we view emotions as something that screw up rationality. That's the, the, the underlying uh, the underlying uh, idea. When Frank originally asked me to, to write this article, this is what I thought I was going to do. I was going to write about this stuff right here. And then I realized, well, other people have already done this. They've done it better than I can probably do. And I want to do something else. So I continued reading. And I decided that this way of viewing emotions isn't essentially a black box picture. And I raised the question, well, should we view emotions this way? It's supposed to be jiggling. Yes, to, as, as a black box, you know. And so we know that there's stuff in there, there's emotional stuff in our heads going on, uh, but we don't know what it is, and we don't think we need to understand the inner workings of emotions. We just assume that they're there. Or is it better to view emotions in this way? From a biological perspective, from a perspective that recognizes that our emotions come out of a complex set of reciprocal interactions between our brains and our bodies. Now, it's only important to view emotions this way from a biological perspective if we think it has some sort of implication for how we understand social behavior, not reaction behavior, social behavior. Obviously, I'm going to argue that I think it does have some sort of implications for that. So, now, instead of having a chart, another picture. Um, why did it do that? Why did it do that? I'm experiencing emotions of both shame and anger. <laughs> Anyways, what I wanted to get across here is that we really do need to think seriously about the brain. And I'm drawing out some word problems. Doug Mass and Jonathan Turner, all of them. They talk about what is called the triune, the triune brain. And it's simply a recognition that we have sort of three, our evolutionary history has laid down three different sets of structures that make up the brain. On the one hand, we have what's called the reptilian brain. This is composed of the cerebellum and the brain stem. This is the most ancient part of the brain. It controls autonomic functions, heartbeat, breathing, etc. Our brain literally resembles a reptile. This is tens of millions of years old. Then we have the neo-mammalian brain, which is uh, an additional layer of mineral structures. It's made up of the amygdala, the hippocampus, the, uh, what else we got? the thalamus, the pituitary gland. Okay. This part of the brain unconsciously, I emphasize that word, unconsciously coordinates inputs from senses to generate feelings and emotional states that influence cognition and behavior. And then finally, we have the neomammalian part of the brain, which is the frontal lobe and the neocortex and all of that stuff. This outer layer uh, is the part that's the last to evolve, it may be less than a million years old, and it's the part that consciously processes sensory stimuli. Another way to look at it, well, you can't see it because this is a slide of this so we sort of have two dynamic brains. We've got an emotional brain, which is composed of this limbic system, all of this stuff in here. And then we've got a um, rational brain, which is composed of the, the prefrontal cortex, where we do all of our rational thinking. Interestingly, the prefrontal cortex is the only part of the brain that is not, not wired to receive sensory input. Okay, all, of your, all of your thinking. Do is not based on sensory input, it's based on information that you get from other parts of the brain. Interestingly, the neural pathways that connect this part of the brain to that part, that run from the limbic system to the prefrontal cortex, greatly outnumber the number of pathways that run in the other direction. Okay, what's the implication? It's important to know that many emotions exist.
exists independent of rational appraisal. They are literally subcortical in the <coughs> conscious way. This is particularly important for us because two, two of the most basic emotional states, fear, aversion, anger, and assertion, involve the most ancient parts of the brain. It's also interesting to find out that positive emotions, such as satisfaction and happiness, actually involve parts of the brain that are much slower to react activate than fear and anger. So it's easier to feel bad than it is to feel happy, literally, is how your brain works. <coughs> Emotional impulses are much more likely to overwhelm rational cognition and vice versa. And this is suggested by the, the way in which the neural pathways run. So when you think you're doing rational analysis, certain situations, you are actually responding to unconscious emotional information that is sent from the limbic part of the brain. <clears throat> to me, this means that rational judgments may reflect unconscious emotional states. The decision to do A rather than B may not reflect any really sort of conscious assessment of costs and benefits and things like that or expected utilities, but rather a reaction to an emotion, either liking, disliking, fearing, or not fearing, that is generated subconsciously based on perception and condition. How does this connect to behavior? Boy, I hope this works. It's very important to understand that the emotional brain perceives sensory stimuli much, much, much faster than the rational brain does. And it tags it as either fearful, stimulating, irritating, pleasant, or something that can be ignored. And then it feeds this information to the body. So I just have this little example here. Where he has this gun. There's supposed to be an arrow there. At this point, the guy has seen a gun. What does he do? It's one of two things. <laughs> Again, you're an angry. The two responses that most of us can have, most of us do this, we run into all hell when we see the A police officer, though, on the other hand, may do something else based on conditioning. Although I would argue with this too. The thing that, that I want to get across to you is that this reaction, when the gun comes up, the sense goes in here, these reactions are based on emotional information that is not consciously assessed. If you had to stop and think about this, you probably did. You got to be gone. I was actually thinking that there is a third response on the night, but I couldn't find a picture of last night and get it up. I should put a little bunny rabbit here, frozen in fear, because that probably 